Welcome to Intersections, a series of art talks that aims to uplift and connect local creatives hosted at the Eastside Art House in Riverside, California. All right, uh, thanks for coming to Intersections. Um, uh, show of hands, who's been here before for the last one? Woo! Good job, you're, y'all get gold stars. <laughs> Extra donut Welcome back. <laughs> so uh, today we have um, local Marina Valley superstars. <laughs> <laughs> Genevieve <laughs> Aleman, am I right? Yeah, you actually said that really good. Yes. And Rosie Cortez. Big hand applause. <laughs> so they're um, both uh, members here at the art house. Um, so a little bit about the intersections. Um, Orlovi's idea. Oh, you can talk about it, Professor. Yeah. Oh, sure. So I really wanted uh, to kind of bridge the gap between all of us uh, creatives here in the IE, especially in Riverside. We have such a culture here at the art house of like collaborating and working together and sort of sharing our knowledge. So I wanted to for everyone to meet, first of all, like everyone to meet each other um, and then to hear from, you know, real life working artists, uh, how they make their living, what inspires them and sort of then inspire everybody else. Um, but yeah, and uh, Willis had done a talk before, so I was like, please help me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then everyone just pitched in, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, I can't wait to hear what Rosie and Genevieve have to say. <laughs> Getting started, like, uh, kind of bring it back, so I'll, I'll ask uh, Genevieve first. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> let me just, same questions, but we'll just like take turns. But um, okay. Pretty much like what was a, like everyone had a different like experience with art and like um, I get creativity in general, but um, what's like one of the first memories you had of either creating or getting into something artistic? I think probably my first memories, I grew up in Riverside, so I have to say like Riverside, like you said, has a great culture of artists and the art scene. And so like my first like, early memories was getting to go to the art walk in Riverside with my family. Because it was something that you didn't really have to go spend money at, but you just got to go and see what people were doing and see what they were creating. And I think that's what inspired me the most was to see these people putting themselves out there, um, even if it was scary, but still doing what they loved and just showing the world like, hey, this is me, this is what I create, you know? And I think that was what was so inspiring to see as a child was, wow, these people, I don't know if this is their main job, but they're still out here doing their thing. And it, it's so crucial to see that as a kid, because if you don't, then you don't know that that's an opportunity or that could be possibly an outlet for yourself. So once from there, I saw that, I started going home and painting and drawing and doing my thing, because that just, it, it lit something in me that I don't think would have been lit if I w didn't grow up in Riverside uh, as a child. So I'm very grateful grateful for my city for that uplifting their artists the way they did. So yeah, I feel like that was really like the core memory of mm. being seeing that creativity was an outlet for people and that I needed to do it for myself. Well, you make a good point. It's like because I grew up in San Bernardino, but like. You just have to know people who were doing stuff, like either street artists or whatever. Because I remember the first art walks were like, got older, like Redlands had one, and like, oh, cool, people are doing stuff. And, but like, it's cool that you, you got to experience that like as a child, but that's, a big, that's very important. Like, um, just like the, when you go through as a younger um, person, like, being, oh, I can do this. And I never thought about that way too. But uh, what you're yeah, I, I think that kind of relates to like this idea of accessibility and just being able to um, see it around you in your town. Like sometimes you can't afford to go to a museum or be in like you know get paid for like art classes or sometimes even art is like the thing that's least funded in schools. And so it's like where do you where do you even like find that inspiration or where do you even see other artists like creating? And I think one of my earliest core memories was I would I saw my brother's like drawings of of elephants, and I just remember that as like I was a really really like little kid just seeing this and being like, how is this possible? Like, how could you make like it just didn't make sense. It was magic, you know. It was like like I don't know. And then I'd seen like programs on TV like Bob Ross, and I remember there was this like there was these infomercials of this lady. I don't know what her name was, but she would do like multiple colors on the brushes and then do these like leaves that were like, 
and I was like mind blown <laughs> like how like I don't know I guess it was like the power of the illusion of art mm -hmm. that was so interesting to me and so as a kid then I would we had those scholastic book fairs and I would always get the like how to That's draw right. how yeah. to draw a horse and it was like wow. draw two circles yeah, and then and then and then finish it and then just and then just draw the horse like so easy <laughs> so like it was just like yeah like I don't know like having all the like just accessibility to art I think you know makes a difference and um, so yeah whether it is seeing like other artists at the art walks it's all those things just accumulate into like that interest I guess and so from there it was just always like every art class every art club like I just wanted to know how like that illusion was made and so that's where like I guess I was really inspired and driven to like learn how to create that magic that I saw. Do you still use those techniques that you learned from the scholastic books? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, so check it out, because I'm That's like, um, I, I don't have like the like, formal art background, just kind of learned like along the way. But when I'm, he's not here, but Rick was doing the walls in the back, and he was doing it like, I think it was supposed to be a, a panda or a, a bear. Then he did the circles first. I was like, oh, that's where the cheeks go. Like, I don't, and I went back to that horse idea of like, hey, that's like the cheek of the horse. He's like, did the circle. And then I was like, oh, that's like, go all the way back. It's like, but anyway, I'm sure like people took like, like classically trained like um, artists and stuff. Like that's all part of like basic fundamentals that yeah, I never so. really learned. <laughs> Speaking of classically trained, would you say that you have to go to school or art school? Did you go to art school? I did not. <laughs> I know I, you did. Yes, and I think absolutely not. I don't. I don't think you have to go to art school. I think I definitely needed it because I needed that. Like I needed that guidance and somebody, a teacher, telling me like, you know, like get it done, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> but I think you can definitely be self-taught, and I think both are really valid ways of learning. And like you can go. Like I mean, the internet is an amazing oh, yeah. place nowadays. Now. Like you can learn. Everything. Like, you can definitely be self-taught, for sure. Um, so I don't think it's necessary, but I think there, there's, you know, there's two avenues that you can take, and I think both are just, are, very, are valid. And I think just being here, um, specifically the Eastside Art House, or just collaborating with other artists, and you learn from them as well, you know? You That's teach true. them a little something, <laughs> they teach you a little something, and you can learn something from anyone that you come across. So it's, it's good to do that as well. Yeah, I actually think that that's probably one of the quickest ways to you know, get better at your craft is to be around other artists. And I think everybody does know something that you don't. And it's super valuable to just feed off of other people. Because yeah, otherwise you feel like this overwhelm if you're like, you know, alone in, in, your, in your studio, in your room. And I mean, I, I don't know, I think we can be introverted as artists for sure. But I think it is valuable to surround yourself with other creatives because there's these like, there's so much knowledge that other people have that can help you. And so I think that is just like a hyper speed way to just like get better at your craft. It's just like, like, hey, how did you do that? And then they show you their like, almost their shortcuts. And you're like, oh, like I didn't have to go and like take a, a course for, you know, 10 months to learn how to do that. And you can just learn it from somebody else, so. That's true. I, I learned how to airbrush here and I had no idea how to hold an airbrush. <laughs> But uh, speaking of, so someone telling you what to do, um, now that you don't have that, obviously, or some of us, most of us are not in school anymore. So how do you keep motivated? How do you keep working, like, and staying creative and, like, working through those art blocks that you might have or? Yeah, I think, I don't know, because I was, I had gone to school for so long and I felt like that was a little bit of a crutch for me where I was always just like, oh, well, I'm still in the learning phase. Like, I'm not an artist yet. Like, it took me a long time to even consider myself an artist. But, um, like, I don't know, I guess, like, going to school, I, rel I became so reliant on somebody telling me, like, oh, this is your next assignment. This is how it's done. And, and I had to almost, like, unlearn that and, like, just be like more self-discipline and be like, okay, now I had to set my own deadlines. I had to find my, almost like create my own assignments at this point. And so it's like, what do I want to like create? And yeah, cause for so long I was just kind of fulfilling these like assignments. I was starting to paint very, um, like it wasn't myself anymore. I felt like I was just like following this like rule book. And so a lot of that was since graduating art school, I had to kind of just be like, 
like, I don't know, look inwards and be like, well, what do I care about and what is the art I want to create? And I think that's when things really started to open up. It's just like, what is the art that you want to make in the world? Like, or what is the art you want to see? Like, you know? How about you, Genevieve? I think um, you actually gave me one of the best pieces of advice a few weeks ago. Um, these past few months, I just felt like I was like thing after thing, and I didn't have time to really kind of slow down. And one thing you just told me is like, take off your shoes, go outside, just relax and allow yourself to feel grounded because sometimes we get caught up in this like cycle of doing, 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 and you don't have time to just kind of sit back and just reflect and just be thankful for the moment you're in right now because you're just always constantly thinking of the destination instead of being uh, like just mindful of the days you're, you're going through at the moment, you know? So I think that was probably one of the best pieces of advice which is to sit back, reflect, and almost, you said meditate, <laughs> pray to Sky Daddy. <laughs> That's what we call him. I did, but, <laughs> but, um, I did say that. Just be thankful of where you're at and what you're doing. And it, it's a good problem to be busy. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I think that, I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's a good problem to have a lot of things that you have to do and a lot of uh, tasks you have to complete. And it's okay to take a break sometimes because if you're not, you're going to burn out and mm. you're going to overwhelm yourself and you're not going to it's hard to come back from that, you know? That's true. So just take that time to reflect, sit back, and start when you feel ready again. So were, any, were there any like stumbling blocks like as far as, um, I'll go with Rosie first, but like, um, so when you decided to be like, I'm, I'm gonna go um, approach this art career a little bit more seriously, now that I decided to not to have to follow the orders that like the instructors are given or whatever, but, um, were there anything like that you felt like, oh man, this is like a, how do I maneuver? How do I do this? Like, um, I mean, each each artist goes to different blocks, but like once you take that first step, like it's, it's, you're free from that um, structure, but at the same time, because I think like uh, you mentioned accessibility earlier, and what what were the things that you faced, kind of like for um, starting off as a um, full time artist, I guess. I think. Um I don't know, I think one of the first, uh, just, you know, taking after taking that leap of faith and just being like, okay, I'm gonna create art, it was just like a complete fear of uncertainty. Like, I don't know, like, where I'm gonna end up. Like, how does one even create a career? And so it was really scary and just really overwhelming. Um, like, I, I would just have all these, like, just existential crisis moments where I'm just like, is this even gonna work out? <laughs> like, what is gonna happen to me? Like. Um, so, I don't know, I think it all, all kind of comes back to like mindset and you literally have to kind of be like, well, like at least I have this opportunity to be able to do this. Um, and so it felt like at first, if I, f I did feel very like scared and alone and I'm like, I don't know how this is gonna work. And I think it, it really was a pivotal moment to join the art house. Like, I'm not just like, you know, just like <laughs> like plugging in the art house. But, <laughs> but it really made all the difference is, is to feel like you aren't the only one, like alone in it. And I felt very empowered by the other artists around me. So I think, yeah, that was, I don't know, that was a really big challenge at first. It's like the fear of uncertainty, really. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, I'm still not there. <laughs> so. I actually think we'll probably never get there. Like, no, like it kind of will always be that way, and you almost have to be just like comfortable with being uncertain. Like, mm. it's okay Ooh, to be uncomfortable. Good. I like that. <laughs> Well, so I'm definitely not a full-time <laughs> artist. I've served tables on this <laughs> most of my days. But, I mean, I've seen this and seen the journey that Rosie's had this past year. I met her a year ago, and I remember the first conversation we had was talking about how she wanted to be a full-time artist, but she didn't know how she was going to do it. And at that time, I was like, well, we have a little plant stand. We have plants. Like, how can we work together? And so from there, um, we did, like, collaborative, like, live model sessions with my dad where we would come set up the plants, and then we'd do just painting and stuff like that. And so I think it just comes down to just networking with people, learning about people, what they need, what they can do for you, and helping each other along the way. That's what's going to make the biggest difference of where you're going to go in your career is just being willing to uh, get to know people and to just give the helping hand when it's possible. 
So, I mean, eventually I'd like to be a full-time artist, but for right now I feel like um, in Reno Valley, uh, it definitely just needs someone to kind of help open the doors <laughs> for other people because I care more about my friends in Moval than I do about myself right now, so. I love that. And, like, seeing the, you know, the murals going up in Marina Valley and the art walks and stuff, can you talk about what you because it's just starting out. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about, like, what you are doing as far as your work there and... Yeah, so Rosie has her MVC <laughs> mural going up right now, and it's been really fun just to be alongside and to get to learn um, how, how to do it, because I've never got to experience anything like that. And I think it's super cool, because these past few weeks, we've met so many people that are just, it, feel involved in something. Um, we have a little friend named Roland. He's, oh, Roland. he's such a sweetheart, and he texts us every day, like, you guys were my best friends, you're my second family. Like, I've never felt involved into something until now, you know? Exactly. So it's not just art, it's something more than that. It's the human connection you make, and these people that you get to meet, and you probably wouldn't have got into unless this opportunity arises, you know? So uh, with the art walk, it was honestly such a beautiful night, and I'm so thankful thankful um, that everything went smoothly. Uh, we had all these people coming out, um, live painting, we had people selling their jewelry, we had um, musicians from Moreno Valley, um, just people who were desperately wanting a spot to showcase their talents and to showcase who they are. You know, and um, being able to do that in your own hometown, it just, it, it feels so powerful. Because people go to Paris, they go to Pomona, they go to Riverside to show who they are. And the biggest thing for me is like, no, you don't have to go away from Reno Valley. You should be able to do that here. And it makes me sad because Reno Valley is literally, Reno in Spanish is literally dark, <laughs> dark <laughs> valley, you know? And it's sad because it is, it is kind of, you know, there's not much uh, art going around right now, but the goal is eventually to see it lit up with murals and to see statues or whatever public art visuals you want to see because like I said before as a kid that was the crucial moment that I feel like made me who I am today is because I got to experience that and the connection I was able to make and stuff like that so yeah just to be able to have that in Reno Valley and people don't have to drive away for it that would be the ideal. I think uh, I think you know it just has to start somewhere like and somebody has to be that like per, like Somebody just has to start it, and like I, we know, or we were saying, like we know there's a lot of creatives in Myrtle Valley, but what is happening and what had happened in Riverside too is like people are leaving, or you know, you feel like you have to go to LA, or you, you have to go to New York to make it as an artist, or to do these creative endeavors, whatever that has like looks like, and it's just so sad because it's like we know that people are just like have don't have the space or an event or something cool to go to to express themselves and so you know I felt really empowered here at the art house and the community that we built and it's just like well can we do that somewhere else and like maybe our neighboring hometown like that has nothing maybe we could start something there and so you know and I feel like I couldn't have done it myself just by myself like you know we had like you know we connected together and we're like well hey you're from Moreno Valley I'm from Moreno Valley like like what's going like you know and then like uh, meanwhile like I was reached out by Ali to create a mural and so we're like hey this is a good opportunity to get like something going like there's already like this project happening um, we connected with the mayor of Moreno Valley and we you know we talked about like our vision and so you know, like that was, you know, this networking thing, which can be really scary, but it's like, if you just, you find the people that actually care too, like, I think you could move mountains, literally, and like, yeah. and mountains, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> but yeah, so, so I think, I don't know, I think coming together, it just makes us more powerful, and, you know, she's passionate about, uh, you know, building community and has already done that even like with her social media platforms and, and her family's business, like it's amazing to see. And so we're like, let's join forces and let's see what we can create. And so, you know, it is scary because it's like it hasn't things, certain things haven't been yeah. done or we've heard stories about how things haven't worked out in the past. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, that doesn't have to be our outcome. Like, we can, like, why not take a chance? Like, what's the worst that can happen? It's like, we, like, you know. You know what it reminds me of? Um, she sent me a video a while back, and it's just the one person, and he's in a field, and he's dancing by himself. And he looks crazy, because <laughs> he's there dancing by himself. 
But then one person comes and he's dancing with them. And they're like, okay, now there's like two people two dancing, years. you know? And then all of a sudden, all these people just start coming and start dancing. And you no longer remember who was the first one that started it or the second one that started it. You just see the outcome of all these people having fun, enjoying themselves and in this moment. And it's like, that's kind of what I want to do, you know? It's not about me. It's not about Rosie. It's about the bigger picture of what you can do, the legacy you can leave from Moreno Valley. That is so powerful. I'm literally like tearing up right now. We'll share the video. It's, 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 it's such a good video. It's such a good video. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Speaking of that, like I know personally, I've seen a lot of that growth on social media. Like I follow you guys on TikTok and I've just Thank seen you working on this. Um, would you recommend other artists, you know, share their journey and like what platform do you even start with? What do you use? I definitely started with TikTok. Um, the time of it was COVID 2020, and I was supposed to be graduating high school. So it was just like one day we never went back to school, got kind of depressed, and I would sit there on my phone for hours just scrolling and seeing just other people's content. And something hit me, I, I, I believe it was God talking to me, but telling me like, why don't you do it? Sky like, Daddy. why don't you, with Sky Daddy, yeah, Sky Daddy <laughs> talked to me. <laughs> like, why don't you do it? Like, you're just sitting here all this time watching other people create, watching other people do what you want to do, why not just try? So at the time, my dad was, um, he does succulent arrangements, he, he loves plants, so I would just record him doing his thing, I would record our days together, stuff like that, and people started liking it. I was like, oh, crap, like people like what we're doing, you know, and it's just us being authentic, our authentic selves, and so my biggest thing, like advice for people is just do it, what are you waiting for, are you waiting for you to get more confident in yourself, are you waiting for you to get older, like I don't know what it is, like just do it, that's the biggest thing, and you won't know until you try, and it, unless you try, it's never going to happen for you, mm -hmm. so even if it's just the most basic content, just put it out there, because you never know who's watching, and who who likes what you're doing, because there's been so many times I've, I've heard people People tell me like, oh, you brought me out of my depressive state. Like you really helped me like feel like this, this, this. I'm like, wow, I didn't even feel like what I was putting out there had that much value. But because I hear that, I'm like, oh, wow, it does, you know? So even if it's the smallest thing, like just keep doing you and creating and don't be scared because like I said, you never know who's watching and who needs to hear the messages that you put out. Um, because if you're putting it out yourself, like chances are someone else needs to hear it too. That's true. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I do think that there is value in sharing your art, and it is so scary at first, because, you know, you're your own worst critic, and you're like, oh, is this even good enough? Is, is anybody even going to like it? Like, you know, you're just like, Oh, you're, there's this fear of just, like, how it's going to be received. Yeah. And, then, and then, oh, you get four likes, and then you, like, it's like, oh, see, I suck, like, like you know, <laughs> and it's like, we literally just have to get over that, because yeah. there's people that are, like she said, that are watching that you don't even know, they're not even commenting, they're not even liking it, but they're paying attention, and you're, you're putting it out there that you're into this thing, or you're enthusiastic about this thing, and it's like they're keeping this, like, mental database of, like, oh, there's this person that's actively doing this thing, and then these opportunities come up or they start plugging you into like, hey, I know this artist that does this thing. And like, that's how I found out about Genevieve. It's like people were sharing me her videos. They're like, this is girl in mobile that does these plant stuff. And I was like, I have to go meet her. Like, I have to go talk to her. Like, so I went up to this. Were you dancing in the field? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the field. I was like. <laughs> hey, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, so like I was aware of her because, you know, but I wasn't even commenting or, or like really like in her page, but I was aware of her, like her and her family's like existence, and I thought they were super inspiring. So I went to the one of their um, like vegan depot things, and oh, I, miss I was like, I was like, <laughs> I need to, I was like, I just need to like connect with them. And um, I, I think it was um, you get you commented on a post from. Eastside Art House about a book that we had. Yeah, my dad. I think your dad was like, oh, I want one. Is there any, is there any copies left? And I actually, we didn't have any copies left at the time. And I, I was like, I'm going to go give him my copy. Mm -hmm. And so I that's went such a good book. and I went to just give him. And that's how I, I met mm -hmm. them. And they were like, maybe there's ways we can collaborate. They're like, they do plants and we do art. And maybe it doesn't seem like there's a crossover. But then I was doing a model workshop. And then we're like, hey, bring your plants in. And so it's like, you never know how you can like collaborate mm -hmm. on different things. And so it's super valuable. 
um, to keep sharing your content, even though it's scary. Keep sharing your story, like what you do and whatever it is that you're passionate about. Like somebody is like paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, you bring up several good points of, I think social media now, especially like app, like during the pandemic and now was like a super powerful tool. But I think the other part is like, I think for, cause I saw, I've worked with some people that were like Gen Z younger and social media is like easy. It's like second nature, second nature. And you don't have to think about it. And I think if you're, when you're older, like 30 elder and above, millennials, <laughs> yeah. like it's like, you have, you have to think about it twice because then, because I remember we had a talk before a few years back about, I think right before the pandemic, like the end of, or the beginning of the pandemic before, like um, we had uh, artist talks and um, purely about social media and how like, um, people, your feelings will get hurt. Like you can't have like emotions tied to the likes, you know, because it's yeah. not a, it's totally not, it's an extension for yourself, but you can't have feelings on the other side of the screen. But um, for myself, like I wouldn't even post anything. I actually still don't, but it, post anything for a long time because of like wanting to curate to a certain degree or like uncontrolling your feed. But at the same time, I've gotten a lot of jobs just through social media and connecting with really good people that I would never meet unless it was through social media. And, um, but yeah, like now I'm learning from the younger generation to be like, use it as a tool to grow your art practice and also connect with people in the community. Like it's wild, like people are like, oh, I saw you do this, and like, well, I, I walk that same street over and over, and I see you like painting. I was like, what? <laughs> so I don't even, I hardly paint. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's definitely a super important tool. But is there something like I've I've seen your growth through social media, like the TikTok and everything, and like, is there a challenge that you, or maybe advice you would give to people, like say? making content or um, just to grow your, um, or separating yourself from your content and also making content just so to grow your business, you know? Mm. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I think there is, there, like there's so many things you don't see on social media. Like like sometimes I feel like what the stuff I'm posting is, is oh, like it just looks, you know, like glamorous or it's like, oh, it look, it's, it's like this romantic version of, of being an artist, but you don't see a lot of the the struggles and like, you know, the you don't feel the blistering heat that uh, when we were painting the mural and how our hands were cramping up and we're just like, oh, you know, like you don't see that stuff. And so um, it is so easy to look at someone's page and and be like, oh, like they're like they have it so easy and they, and it's just like they're just on this steady incline but it's just like the reality is there is this whole roller coaster and like just background of sleepless nights like you know we were here till midnight last night working on our grants and there's just there's this like you know there's this ugly part to it that is not as glamorous but it is part of it and so um yeah i would just i guess my advice would be just like don't judge yourself and what you, or judge or compare yourself to what you see on so other people's social media yeah, it's huge. That's yeah. yeah, likes don't often like equal the sales either. Mm -mm. So oh, not at all. I've heard that from other artists. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does not. <laughs> yeah, so like back to the um, when you mentioned like being full time artists earlier, I think there's like people like a, I think it's a misconception of like what a full time artist is because everyone, like um, whether you're has you're full time doing your own practice or you're you have two or three jobs on the side and doing art, you're a full-time artist 100% of the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, and that's like almost like a lot of the people I know is this, uh, you're, you're not an artist just because you're working at your side job, you know? You're artist 100% here all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, that's why I think the social media, it's like, it's an extension of that where this is like the persona that you create for people to connect with through the art. But, um, as far as like say, like say um, converting. So like if you you have your own art practice, how would you like you talk about sales on like the likes don't equal sales? But is there a way that you would push your um, content a certain way to help your art practice? Like say like I mean it helps with the mural stuff. Mm -hmm. You put it out there, a lot of people show up. Like how important is that? Like the, um, 
putting that out there for people to connect with your practices? I feel like calling out the community yeah, um, yeah, yeah. is the biggest thing, yeah. especially because, I mean, for example, like social media, it's global, you know, it's not just, oh, it's Marino Valley, oh, it's Riverside, it's, it's a cry out for everyone. So when you make it more specific to people's needs, rather if it's somebody that needs mm. to start practicing their art or somebody that needs to find friends and needs to find their community close to town, you know, it's, it's a little different rather than um, make it more in general, you know, so I think the biggest thing that you do is it's it's specific to the needs of the community, and that's why people see it and why people come to you because it's it's specific. Mm. I didn't think about that. I think um, it is. It has been very crucial to almost like let people in on my process. I think you know showing like the build up to the creation of our mural at, at Moreno Valley College, or or even like showing like the hiccups about like I don't know. I was sharing about the bird that I got wrong. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. It was just like this like silly thing, but like it's also part of that process or like um, I don't know like letting people in on the experience of creating I think has been really powerful for me um, because then now you have this like like you, it's like people are in the room with you or, or creating watching it unfold and then when they see your, your final piece they're like oh it's like I saw that baby be born almost yeah. you know it's like they were <laughs> like yeah. now you're invested in it and yeah. so I think that is one way that I've been able to connect with my my art with the people that you know end up like appreciating it mm -hmm. is is just kind of letting them in on my journey i think it's cool too that with that mural there's so many like young kids from like teenagers to even older people that came out to be a part of it and to help with it and like you said it's not it's no longer you see the project and you're like oh that's nice it's now like oh i i did some brush strokes in there i put in the work for it so it, you get a different perspective on it rather than oh it, it's complete so that's one thing like in reno valley that people are saying like oh murals go up they're going to get tagged on, like graffiti is going to happen. And I think if you give them the opportunity to come and join and to be a part of it, people have a different level of respect and love for it because they got to have a say in it, because they got to sit there and, and work with you, you know? So just involving the community as much as possible, I think is so important for art to, to be left alone, one thing, <laughs> and for it to last and for it just to be loved on. <laughs> How do you deal with the negativity of like? Oh, man. You know, like, you know, that, that's like the. So, <laughs> so I mean, that's like that's the opposite just, end of like yeah. the social media, like. like yeah, that's just like part of Like some like whatever you do. Hardcore bird watchers be like, that's the wrong feather yeah. on the yeah. mural. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever you do, you're gonna have people against you. It doesn't matter what it is, how good you feel like you're doing, how positive your message is. There's always gonna be the backside to it. So the biggest thing I've learned is just not to take anything personal. That a lot of the times that these people are upset or angry at themselves they have something <laughs> inside them that is going on so it's not a reflection of you but a reflection of how they're feeling inside so one way I've always learned to just kind of deal with hate is not to fight fire with fire but to fight fire with water and what is water it's cool it's calm it's it's flowing yeah yeah like you got to calm these people down so when you when someone's <laughs> angry and you fight it with love it's like oh shit like no I don't, I'm sorry guys <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong you know because I'm being a jerk to somebody that's just you know peace and love so with that like don't take anything personal it's completely something that's going on in themselves fight hate with love I know it's hard to do that sometimes but I mean kill them with kindness yeah. that's the biggest thing I can say it's just it's yeah. nothing against you it's it's something they're dealing with themselves so empathy oh. empathy goes a very long <laughs> way just to feel sorry for those people and to wonder hey what are they going through you know I think a lot of times that we don't we don't think that like you're just like oh this person's being rude I'm gonna be rude back to them and I'm sitting there like I've, I've, I've had to get my mom a few times because she'll sit there for hours <laughs> like responding that. to people I'm like mom why are you giving so much energy to that there's no point to do so because now you're wasting your time you're getting all wild up over someone that's on the internet you know what I mean so there's yeah, just you don't really know no they're point. a real person exactly there's people who literally spend their day like cussing people out that's saying right. troll comments just to get a reactions out of people and that's what they want is for you to feed into that for you to fight with them so that's why fight it with love it's it's crazy to say and I don't think a lot of people it's hard to do but once you start doing it you'll see these people change into like oh Oh, I'm going to just back up a little bit, you know, like this isn't, she's not giving the reaction I want, and then they go away. So simple as that. Like, just don't feed into that, because 
yeah. they're probably not posting anything they have <laughs> nothing you know like yeah. they probably don't have a profile picture they're just trying to get you mad yeah you know so don't take it personal it's something they're going through yeah don't feed the trolls <laughs> don't feed don't feed the trolls starve the trolls <laughs> Are you guys working on um, anything currently besides um, fighting trolls? <laughs> um, I luckily I got the opportunity to work with the school district. Um, it's Palm Middle School in Moreno Valley, and they reached out because they saw the different like events we've been doing and stuff like that. And um, they pulled me into the school and they're like, "Look, we love what you're doing for Moreno Valley. We would love for you to help us coordinate an art show." So they're actually having an art festival on April 19th. We have a few people like Jesse and Byron who are going to be down there painting, and I'm very thankful for you guys. Thank you for doing that. So it's going to be such a beautiful show. It's to, this month is uh, Autism Awareness Month, so it's to not only highlight our Spectrum creatives, but it's an all-inclusive show where we wanted the whole district to get involved. So we have schools like Valley View, Canyon Springs, um, elementary schools that are submitted artwork, and it's just going to be a great night. We're going to be showing their artwork. We have some performers. We have music from my dad playing his music over there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Evolve volunteers a lot for me, but I do the same for him. We help each other. But yeah, so I'm really just thankful to get my foot into the door with the school district, because from there they said, the, the, I met the principal the other day, and she's just like, this is where I want a mural, this is where I want a mural, I want a mural over here. So when the time comes, like I know you know a lot of artists that you're able to give these opportunities to, and so that's the biggest thing. that It's not work for me, because I mean, I, I'm still developing my skill, but just to be alongside these artists and get to learn and make these connections with people who can give us these opportunities is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been really cool to get to meet new people and just to continue to put myself out there because it's scary, it's scary, but I mean, it's going a long way. What would you say? Get comfortable with the uncertainty? uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then another thing, my father will be actually having his art show at Blue Rose Gallery on the 22nd. So you guys are all invited. Please come Is down. Earth yeah, it's Earth Day. I feel like it's not. It's there couldn't be a better day for him. Not so sure. yeah, it's going to be his first time, other than the Riverside Art Museum, of him displaying like uh, his own show. So just like, that's what I'm saying, like you get to meet these people. I met Enrique, sweet soul, very yeah. kind. If you guys haven't visited his gallery, please do so, specifically on the 22nd to see my dad. <laughs> but yes, uh, just these connections you make, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of things just keep snowballing. You know, it's like you do one project, you meet these other people, and then, you know, it's like we did one mural, then it's like, oh, hey, we want a mural here, and, and we want to work with you guys. It just keeps growing that way. And so um, I, one of my biggest projects right now that I'm in the middle of is finishing the M Moreno Valley College mural. So I, I hope we can finish it by the end of next week. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully the weather's nice to us. Um, and then we will have a big uh, mural reception May 18th. You're all invited. Please be there. It should be an awesome. Invite the bird watchers. <laughs> and definitely the, even the bird watchers will be there. I hope they approve. <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, actually, that is. The feather, <laughs> the feather pattern is incorrect. <laughs> I know. Like, that's what I'm most nervous about. So we'll hope. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I, I think that's a big. I just started one. thinking about the butterfly that we were doing. <laughs> oh yeah, um, so that's what, that's what, you, you changed off. the color, right? That was off. Yeah, because it was executive decision. I thought I thought it was white, so I, I painted the <laughs> butterfly white, and my mom and dad were working on it, and they had it cream, and I was like, "It's not cream, it's white." So I went and like redid all their work, and then the next day I came in and like I had told Willis like, "Please fix it." Like I don't know what I, it, it just didn't look right, and he comes in and he like does it all good, and then I looked, I was like, "Oh crap, it's cream." He, they, they were right. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> but yeah you are both doing such important work and i just want to thank you guys so much for coming and talking to all of us today